We're about to see uh, more new change in the tech industry in the next seven or so quarters than we've seen in probably the last decade or even more. And why am I saying that? Because uh, I'm seeing things coming out of R&D labs like this Microsoft HoloLens, which I'll take off. This is way too dorky, way too heavy, and way too expensive for anybody in this room to be wearing it at a conference but I've seen glasses that do exactly the same thing or very similar things that'll cost less than $1,000 and be about four ounces that are coming in the next year. When I uh, interview people all over the world, I start seeing uh, all sorts of new things happening across the industry, right? I interviewed the guy who made Ethereum here in Canada four years ago when he was 17 years old. Um, I've seen the first self-driving cars, Mercedes gave me a ride around in, in their first one. And I've started seeing a, a trend of augmented reality long ago. I went to Germany and visited Mateo in 2011, and they showed me monsters on the sides of skyscrapers. And today, when you start seeing the hype about uh, Apple's AR kit, Apple's AR kit came out of the Mateo purchase that it did several years ago. So what is going on in, in the world this year? This year you've seen Facebook, Google, Snap, and Apple announce phone-based augmented reality where you're gonna hold the phone like this and see all sorts of interesting things on top of the world. You've started seeing measuring tape apps. You've started seeing things that teach you how to dance. You've started seeing things like this where you can cut a hole in a real wall it disappears and a virtual world is behind that wall. Uh, you've started seeing things where there's a virtual door here on the stage and you push your phone into the virtual uh, door and now you're completely in a virtual world looking around and playing or interacting with that world. This is coming in September on iOS 11. You're already seeing, a, I, I keep a, a Twitter feed called Apple AR World. There's already a hundred examples like this one up on Apple and just a few minutes ago I shared another five. It is happening and it's happening in a big way coming soon. Why? Because 200 million people are gonna get iOS 11 on existing phones. How many people here have an iOS uh, 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 iPhone, right? So most of you will have iOS 11 by October, and you'll have this kind of capability. Most of you uh, probably will buy the new iPhone that's going to have two 3D sensors on it, one that has probably millions of points of data aiming out, and one aiming at your face, which will have hundreds of thousands of points of data. There's rumors that they're getting rid of the fingerprint sensor, and they're going to use face detection to unlock your phone and do all sorts of stuff with your face. Snapchat is a good example of that. If you haven't played with Snapchat's augmented reality filters on your face or the same thing in Facebook Messenger, um, you're missing out. You're going to see all sorts of things like robots that are going to roll around the real world. Why? Because when you use augmented reality, we're going to start uh, mapping this room in uh, depth and in a point cloud. It's going to know that there's people sitting here and that there's a flat space here and a flat space here. And it's going to be able to put, the developers are going to be able to put things on top of these things. Soon you're going to be wearing glasses. So let's talk a little bit further in the future, sometime between now and the next four years. You're going to be wearing glasses. This is a startup uh, from France that's making an app for the Microsoft HoloLens. So this gives you a sense of where things are with the HoloLens. You aim the HoloLens at a TV, a normal TV, like one of these screens, and it puts all sorts of stuff around the TV. And then why are you playing with a physical TV? We're going to virtualize all monitors soon, right? Over the next five or so years, you're going get, to start getting rid of monitors or start not needing them because in your glasses, you're going to have as many monitors as you want. When, when I have my HoloLens, I have five monitors on my table in front of me, virtual monitors. They're not physical. They're not real. They look real in the glasses, and I can interact with them like a, a real monitor, but they're virtualized. And this is a good example. So we're going to see a new kind of television evolve and new kinds of uh, experiences. How does this work? 
This is a video done with the Google Tango sensors, which are similar to the sensors that are coming in the next iPhone. And as you walk around, it's actually seeing the world and looking for places on the world that it, that it knows. Um, and then it'll be able to overlay anything on top of that world. So think about walking around a hardware store, which is what they're doing here, and it's going to know exactly where you are in that hardware store and where everything is in that hardware store. And it'll, you can ask it, you know, hey, hey Siri or hey, hey Google, where's uh, the screwdrivers in the store? And all of a sudden a blue line will appear on the floor taking you right to the store, uh, right to the items. This is already happening. I've visited R&D labs. Uh, in shopping uh, mall companies that already in most shopping malls, they know exactly where every product is in the mall and they're going to be able to do this. This is about to really change sports. Um, the PGA Tour we visited and they are already, they already have 3D uh, scanned every hole in their courses and they already have put sensors on the courses to follow the ball. If you didn't know, they don't use humans anymore for the scoring. The scoring is done by a computer that's watching the ball and how many uh, hits it took to get into the hole. Well, now the PGA Tour is thinking about, well, how do we change our customer experience? How do we improve it so we can compete with TV? Because if you come to the Masters, for instance, and you're on hole 13, and you hear a, a cheer on hole 17, you can't see that. The TV audience can, because they switched to whatever just happened on to the hole 17. But now, with, if you're wearing glasses or maybe holding a phone like this, you're going to be able to see hole 17 and what's actually going on there. And get a lot more data about what is going on even in the hole in front of you than you can today. You're going to start seeing a lot of new cameras. This is an Insta360 from uh, China, $200. I had the, the first 360 camera at Coachella, a big music festival, just three years ago. And my camera back then was $6,000. It was six GoPros on a 3D printed rig. Um, and a lot of software to stitch all those cameras together. And now a $200 camera does image stabilization that's mind-blowing. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things, but it's using the gyroscope from the phone into the, the camera, and it's reorienting the ball of pixels around you in real time. So if you shake the camera, the horizon stays steady. Let's think about photography for a second, because as we get into virtual reality and augmented reality, we're going to need to shoot actors and us in three dimensions because we're going to want our users to be able to walk around those things or have a virtual actor walking around a, a set like this. So uh, if, you, if you study the camera industry, I started seeing weird cameras in uh, uh, 12 years ago. I went to Stanford and Stanford had a project for uh, seeing through a bush. And uh, that was a DARPA project for the military. The military wanted a camera that they could put up to a bush and see through the, through the bush. And they built a grid of cameras that they would computationally look at all the light coming through the bush and add it up into a photo. That today is the Lytro Camera Company. And that's a light field camera. It's a sensor about this big with millions of imaging elements that are looking at the angle of light plus the depth of light, plus the luminosity and the color of light that's coming into you. So we're just about to get some really crazy, weird things happening in photography. Um, that camera, by the way, creates 300 terabytes of data per second. So think about how much data has to be thrown away in the camera to make any data useful out of that camera because it's just throwing too much data at the world um, for that. But let's talk about a, a new kind of camera similar that's a volumetric camera. There's camera companies like 8i, and here we're going to see one from Microsoft. They're putting 50 cameras around you. I was shot in one of these in a, a, a store called Doob, uh, which is making 3D printed models of people. It's a uh, hot thing if you uh, are getting a wedding cake made, put uh, two 3D printed images of you up on the top of the wedding cake. But I was done, the first video I showed you where I was uh, on, on stage with uh, Philip Rosedale, that was actually virtual. And that was a volumetric uh, image made of me put into virtual reality. So let's watch this video and get a taste of what, what the uh, industry is doing with these volumetric cameras. 
Actiongram is an app that allows you to bring holograms into the real world and create and share videos. Being able to incorporate visual effects into live action right there on set is a lot of fun and gets your brain going. It's great to work with holograms in the first place. That's already cool, but the fact that there are these iconic characters makes it even cooler. Welcome to Hollowland. Oh my. <laughs> Go! Uh, so go ahead and have a seat. Wait on your head. Yeah, and I see somebody there in an orange sweater. Uh -oh. That's me. <laughs> this is fascinating. <laughs> We talked about uh, holograms on Star Trek, and to actually be doing that, in reality, today, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Technology and being a part of it at the cutting edge is a thrill that very few human beings get. So it was really fun creating videos with the George Takei holograms because he's just hilarious. Oh no, she didn't. You get this like really high bar of talent that you normally wouldn't get to work with. Love that. It's not every day that you get a chance to work with George Takei. Live action holograms that are three dimensional and function within your actual three dimensional space was mind blowing. I think it's a really exciting time for video creation and storytelling. The glasses are coming. Why can I say that? Because I've seen them. These are two glasses. These are glasses from Loomis, a company out of Israel that's making lenses for the glasses. The lenses have a 720p monitor in the, in the lenses and they weigh about four ounces and they should in volume sell for at retail less than a thousand dollars. The ones that I'm hearing about from Apple are going to be a little less than this at first. We'll see what comes in September if anything comes at all. But if it's not Apple, Magic Leap got $1.4 billion of investment, and they're uh, rumored to be coming out with a developer kit in December of a, a pair of mixed reality glasses with a string of cameras around it that's going to do mind-blowing mixed reality even better than what Ho HoloLens is doing. And so this industry is just about to flip into something new, and uh, it's quite exciting. This really means that we're going to work together in new ways because we're going to be able to walk through virtualized spaces, touch things that are virtual, interact with our friends or our coworkers that are maybe calling in from somewhere else in the world and interacting with them. How many people here have an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive, for instance? Just one guy? Really? This is why I'd have nobody to play with on Saturday nights. <laughs> Because I don't know if you know how mind-blowing this stuff is, you can play Frisbee with somebody in VR over the internet, or shoot them, or play basketball with them, virtual basketball, or a number of other th kinds of experiences. This is happening, and if you're not in VR, you're not I I prepared for what's about to hit in the next seven quarters. So let's talk a little bit of maybe about the eighth quarter, because uh, Google is uh, buying companies up, and so is Facebook, so is Apple, and I've started seeing some of the companies. One of them is iFluence. iFluence uh, uh, was bought by Google last year, and they do eye tracking. Uh, Facebook bought another company called iTribe. Apple just bought a new, another company um, that does the same kind of thing. These sensors that are going to be built in future glasses that are coming are going to see where you're looking and how long your eye is dwelling on things. Uh, what you're about to see, let's see the video that uh, Jim Margraff showed me and, and then we'll talk about what else he's doing. If I want to, I can change pages. And look at here, Here's another, he's uh, controlling this uh, only with his eyes. Of, uh, uh, some electronics in our office and I can go home when I want to. Over here is a medical application. And, um, I'm gonna all with your it. eyes. All with my eyes. So I'm doing this solely with my eyes as fast as I can look. I'm not waiting. I'm not winking. I'm just looking. And here I've got uh, uh, the patient. And I've got some allergy record, protocols, insurance, confidential information, current conditions. Why is he here? Well, he tells me he's got a pain in his foot. Notice I'm looking at this, but there's nothing happening on the screen. But when I decide, for instance, that I want to check out his x-ray, there it is. And now I want to go back because a couple screens ago there was some confidential information, which is here. And um, now it's going to take a picture of my eye. It grabs it, says, oh, who is that? Confirms that it's me. And in a moment you'll see that it'll give me access 
I'm Jim, head of uh, CEO and founder of, of iFluence, and there it is. I've got confidential information. When I want to, I can return home as fast as that. That's amazing. All of my eyes. That's amazing. So, w when we do get eye, eye sensors, and uh, Google is uh, aiming at probably around a year to two to three years, it, it, it's hard to predict these things because this is hard stuff to get out. And uh, you, you've seen that with Magic Leap. They've had a little bit of a delay in getting a product out to the market because this stuff is bleeding edge and it's really hard to predict. But it's coming soon. And when you get eye sensors in your VR or AR headsets, uh, the experts tell me it lets you flip Moore's Law twice. It's like going four years into the future, which is really important because on our phones or on our glasses, we're going to have very small little GPUs. They're underpowered compared to a $600 1080 card, an NVIDIA card, which is what I have running my VR machine. And that's why the VR machines right now are tethered to that machine, because they have a big VR, uh, GPU that's spraying lots of polygons or lots of triangles on the world uh, and doing it in a fast frame rate. So it's really immersive and really fun when you're in VR. But we don't have the ability to put a card this big on your face, right? you're gonna have a little tiny GPU. So the sensors are gonna let us do a new kind of compression called foveated rendering, which is gonna uncompress the scene only where your eye is actually looking. So it'll only need to put a lot of polygons right into that place because your eye works like that, right? Your eye actually only sees black and white around the outside of your uh, eye. And your brain fills in the color and fills in the detail that it saw when you were looking around with the, the center of your eye. Um, before I go on, Jim showed me some stuff he didn't let me film. He showed me a pair of glasses and uh, he said, look at, your, look at your iPhone. I looked at my iPhone with these glasses and a menu popped off the iPhone and said, oh, that's an iPhone 6S Plus and it's $6.99 on Amazon. Would you like to buy it? In other words, the AI recognized properly the product I was looking at, knew the product because it's pretty good at that and getting better if anybody's following Google and what they're doing with uh, artificial intelligence on recognizing things in images. It gives you a big sense of where the future's going with this. And it's mind blowing. He's building an operating system that will let us look at things in our world and control them just with our eyes and it's pretty cool. And add on the voice recognition. By the way, who's using Google Assistant on a Pixel phone or an iPhone? It's a new app that came out a month ago. This thing is mind-blowing in terms of recognition of your voice. And it's mind-blowing because of the data that Google has. It has every search every human has ever made in their database, right? And they ra ran AI on that to recognize patterns. And it's really amazing. I, I, I was showing it to people out here in the noisy condition with music blaring, and it was still understanding me two and a half feet away from my mouth. That, that is, uh, coming out of Microsoft and meeting with the NLP teams there, it's stunning how good it is, and it just happened in the last month. Get it on your iPhones, it's really fun to play with. But that gives you a sense of what, what the foundational technologies that are coming that are being built into these glasses. And finally, um, we're seeing new kinds of social systems being built. And Facebook is just one of them, all space VR and high fidelity and Sansar is just getting some, some press this week. Uh, there's a bunch of them. In, in, uh, fa what you're looking at here is Facebook spaces in VR and soon it'll be in AR because Mark Zuckerberg told me that he's building augmented reality glasses and he hopes to be able to do augmented reality glasses that'll do both VR and AR. Um, and even if he doesn't do it, Apple's working on this, HoloLens, Microsoft has billions of dollars being invested in HoloLens. Somebody will figure out a product that gets us, or most of us, excited about, about this new world. But when you're seeing Facebook around you coming in and you're able to grab a picture and make it bigger virtually and then put it over here and uh, call in your friends into your 3D space and then turn on a 3D video that you shot on this $200 camera and relive a moment, uh, like here in Montreal, I've been shooting a little bit, it's really mind-blowing. It's, it's, it's something you guys need to see and need to understand to be part of this industry going forward because this will happen and this will catch a lot of people unaware if you aren't keeping up to date on this. So. Thank you very much. This is just a little taste of what I'm seeing around the world. 
Uh, it's a fantastic world. It's uh, a world that is also coming out of the self-driving car industry. If you think about it, that car has to recognize the difference between a dog, a cow, and a cat, and a kid, and a tumbleweed. In other words, the AI is being developed to recognize everything in your world, and I'm starting to see products that use this. I, there's a new security camera coming out later this year that will watch your house, and you'll be able to search for things like, show me when my dog has jumped on my couch. How does it know what a couch is and what a dog is? Well, it was taught that by the AI systems that are coming out of the self-driving industry. And your mixed reality glasses, when you get them, are going to need that AI as well. Because one of the flaws of this HoloLens is it only knows surfaces. And same thing with Apple's AR kit. Right now, it only knows surfaces. It doesn't know that's a chair. It doesn't know that's a human. Soon it will. And that's when the developers are really going to be able to build really immersive and really interactive things. So thank you very much.